Hello everyone and welcome back to Memory Matters for All Ages. I'm Janelle Nichols of the Gables of Hudson Assisted Living Residence. We want to welcome back to the program Katherine Kilpatrick. She is a speech language pathologist with over four decades of experience. She is a national speaker and the author of over 30 publications. She writes a blog that corresponds with our program. And uh, welcome back, Kathy. She's back with us today. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much. Um, there is such an interest these days in matters of memory and especially in brain games and how can we ward off possibly a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, the, many people are afraid of that and when they experience memory issues they they think, oh my goodness, what is happening? Uh, do I, I must have Alzheimer's disease. But there are a lot of groups forming now at senior centers and at independent living uh, residences and assisted living residences that you can get involved in and that Kathy has been involved in and setting up some things. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going mm -hmm. to talk about today. Um, again, Kathy, welcome back to the program. Yes. And tell us a little bit about um, what you've seen out there. A lot of groups are forming because there's so much interest. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to mm -hmm. see that people are trying to take it to another level. Sure. So what I found when I do my memory fitness talks is people then, like at senior centers, and we've done a bunch of things we together have. with we a have. variety of groups, from of chambers events. to senior groups mm -hmm. to realtors mm -hmm. and all of that. But I think what's um, interesting is, for example, um, I did it at a senior center. I did a series of four programs, and then they took that information because they had something to work with. And the director of the senior center started a memory fitness group that met like twice a month. And they had about 10 or 15 people, and we actually presented it to an aging conference um, it was pretty mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. And then someone had emailed me and was using my Walking the Path to Memory Fitness. It was a speech pathologist that so was so exciting. And it was in a national chain um, of um, senior independent living residences, and they were doing programs there. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of opportunities uh, to do that. Sure. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think is really important, if you want to start a group, this is my own personal bias, you are often going to attract people on a variety of levels of functioning. So unless it's just an informal group with a bunch of people getting together, that's fine. But if you're going to announce it and open it up to other people that you may not know really well who want to participate, which is totally fine, you really need to have someone um, in charge that uh, is able to handle groups and group dynamics and also has a pretty good understanding because you may attract someone with just worrying about normal aging changes, mm -hmm. you might mm -hmm. attract someone with mild cognitive impairment or I've often had in my programs then someone else that comes, which is great, but they have more advanced dementia. Right, and right. it can create some pretty awkward situations. Mm -hmm. It may be that you need a variety of groups. So, well, I, you know, excuse me, Kathy, I didn't mean to yeah, interrupt, but, okay. you know, we've worked together on so many of these programs. And, and I do agree with Kathy, you've got to have somebody who is... Uh, um, uh, the host or keeps the program moving because everybody wants to talk to Kathy about their individual issues. Mm -hmm. And there's always, I hate to say it, but there's always one in every crowd mm -hmm. and that will monopolize Kathy. So you do need to have someone who can keep it going and is watching the time right. and also who watches out for the speaker. Right, right, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, some of the things that you can do then would be to um, bring in someone to talk about a variety of topics. Mm -hmm. So you might have uh, someone that might come in and talk about driving or medications. Mm -hmm. And so that could be part of your program. I often suggest if you're going to do it for an hour, and we did a series, When Dementia Comes Home, right. and it was an educational conversation group, which mm -hmm. was extremely successful. And we had mm -hmm. exactly that situation. There were people on all levels with a variety right. of right. Um, questions. But by talking in the beginning, I might talk about holidays. And so everybody would have a different issue with that. But then sometimes the questions didn't relate to that. So you could put somebody really on the spot mm -hmm. right. you know, if you have right. that kind of scenario. Well, you know, too, it depends. You, you've got to know what kind of group you want to create. Right. For example, when we did the When Dementia Comes Home, it was set up to have a conversation where people would feel free and comfortable to ask specific questions within a group that 
people would accept it because everybody was in the same boat. Right. But if you're doing a more broad topic, so so you have to you have to decide what do you want, right. um, what what flavor do you want that group to take, what personality do you want right. that group right. to take, and that's yeah. part of what I often do is come in and do a consultation mm -hmm. to help somebody set up that group appropriately right. so that it can be successful. Right. And one of the things that um, this one group is doing is they are using the memory blogs that I created, I think started in January of 2012, and I did a topic, it might be on um, paying attention or it might be on lingering. There were all kinds of different things, and I would create a blog. This was not with the TV show, and so every week they would print that out, they would post it, they had the tip for the week, and they would concentrate on that mm -hmm. for weeks. So it was kind of a self-directed program for right. the group. So that was right. one of the things that you right. might be able to do. What one of the groups did also was then start, um, <clears throat> excuse me, people would share tips. So you'd come in and talk about, you know, like we were talking about the things on your fingers. And, right, for you know, multitasking. To right. try and remember uh -huh. the five things that you had to do because our brain could handle right. that. Right. But it was really neat. And when we presented this at the national conference, we had actually two pages of tips and strategies that the participants had shared. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, that we're, we're going on. And so then you, you learn from someone else. It's like, oh, that's a really good right, idea. Right. You know, like my friend that would always turn her ring around mm -hmm. years before we had all these devices, and she knew that there was something that she needed to remember. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I've done that on occasion, just as a quick that's um, right. reminder. Another thing you could do in the group is share a memory frustration and then have people problem solve because then they're using their cognitive functioning sharing what they might have done, but then it gets a group um, discussion mm -hmm. going. So, you know, my thing is always be curious. I think that can be really, really mm -hmm. helpful. We've done stuff on research. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having someone who is the researcher kind of person, that might be one of us, bring in an article that they've seen and then discuss some of the implications mm -hmm. of that. We've done quite a bit of that in our yeah, program yes. here. Mm -hmm. Another is libraries. Remember when we did the programs at the libraries? We did, and those were very successful. Yep. Those were standing room only. I, I feel like our libraries are so underutilized. Yeah. Yeah. They're just a, a wealth of, of information mm -hmm. and opportunity mm -hmm. there. I was working with a client a couple of months ago, and we were coming up with brain-stimulating um, activities for her to do because she was going to have a hired caregiver with her a couple of hours a week. And she brought up, you know, there's some really interesting programs at the library, and I don't drive anymore, so I'm going to have my caregiver go with me, and then we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a really That's cool excellent. thing to sure. do. Sure. Okay. Sure. And then there's all kinds of things on the internet, certainly for that. And then the one thing I didn't want to neglect to, mess, to mention is we're in Ohio, but the Ohio Department of Aging has a lifelong learning state university program for people over the age of 60. And you can take classes for free. Mm -hmm. So when I retire from being a homeowner in six months. You're going back to school? I'm going to go. I, there's some <laughs> things I really, I think that would sure. be fun. I, I mm -hmm. love learning. I don't want to do the papers and the tests. So right. I think that would be really um, exciting. And excellent. I'm going to provide a link for that in the blog that goes with mm -hmm. this session. So make sure you take a look at that. Well, speaking of that and the link, uh-oh, excuse me. Yes, we do mm -hmm. have, you know, we have our memory matters. Oh, cheers. thank goodness. I Here, got dry. Uh, Oh, cheers to memory. There memory, we go. Yes, All right. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention something, and that is in January, we did a program on um, your seven day memory. Uh, fitness program. Fitness program. Mm -hmm. And there's information on Kathy's website about that. And also, one of my favorite books that I think is one of your best is The Walking, um, the, path. the Path to Memory Fitness One Week at a Time. Mm -hmm. and there's information on that, but I, I think the, that was an, an excellent book. That's one of my favorite things that yeah. you've written. Well, it can really self-direct a program. Exactly. And you get exactly. a bunch of friends together. You don't have mm -hmm. to have a formal group necessarily. Right. Exactly. Right. And watch at the end of the program. You'll see uh, Kathy's website is there and information about her blog. And go on there because we've only got 15 minutes here, but there's just so much information on, on that. And we could talk forever on we all could, of We could. We could talk forever um, <laughs> until we run out of water, and then, we, <laughs> then we'd have to be done. But we, we want to spend the last few minutes of the program talking about two specific wonderful programs mm -hmm. that are coming up. And so grab a piece of paper and a pen. We're going to give you some specifics to contact, who to contact. We're going to give you a phone number. Of course, it will be uh, at the end of the program, too. But tell us about the SAGE 
program, okay. which I just uh, think is amazing. We actually did it. a seven-week we memory did. fitness mm -hmm. program. Um, it used to be um, a program that was run like Elder Hostel, a uh, Road Scholar program, uh, through one of the local colleges. And we're here in Northeast Ohio. And uh, kind of the things changed, and a wonderful woman by the name of Iris Gold uh, decided to create a program called the SAGE Community. And they're set up in different ways. I'm doing one in Youngstown um, in the near future where, and look on the website, because where I present in this area, you know, um, that's open to the community, you can go, where I'm going to talk for two and a half hours, kind of like I do at Chautauqua. But this was a seven or eight week program. They're doing a four week program now for the winter because everybody was begging to have it. Mm -hmm. And they bring in speakers sure. who talk once, one hour, each of those weeks on a particular subject. It is absolutely fantastic. And um, they're starting one, I think, um, or they have one that's that's been going on for a while, but the new one is in April, and I wanted to give you the phone number, 330-288-8809. And that's for the SAGE community, and Iris Gold will be a um, the person that will be taking your message mm -hmm. and she can either call you back or she can send you a brochure for what they're offering for that seven week program in the spring. And there are so many of those. Community colleges often offer mm -hmm. those so you want right. to look into that. You can find those if, if you look and that SAGE program is just oh. a wonderful wonderful program. And they, they're like it. addicted to it. They can't, you yeah. know, when are you going to do it again? Yeah, I, can, yeah, I can understand yeah, that because fabulous. I was the first time I went and uh, through that with you. Uh, I can see why I just was hooked. Yep. I was Hook. Now, you're starting a new group. I am, and I have to make sure I get, I've renamed it four times, so I'm going to look at this. It's, I do have memory. Um, you know. <laughs> well, we, we won't go there right yeah, now. That's, that's but right. Anyway. Okay, it's called the Memory Matters Group, and what we're going to be doing um, at the Gables of Hudson mm -hmm. Um, on March 20th at 10 o'clock, I'm going to do a program on upgrading your memory fitness routine. At the end of that, we're going to talk about the Memory Matters group. It will meet in April, May, and June. And it's going to be limited to about a dozen people because what we're going to do is we're going to do some information like we've done on the program. But we're also going to offer very specialized expertise from where I come from in strategies. And this is for people with early memory concerns. So it might be normal aging or beyond. It might be mild cognitive impairment, someone in their 50s or 60s who's just been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, that young onset group, or pe people in the very early stages. And what you'll need to do, you want to give the information well, for contact? Well, I, I wanted to ask, are you, go, are you limiting the number of members in this group? So I can do an individualized that's what I thought. approach. So, so you need to, if, if you're interested in this, you need to get information right, right away. Um, the, the Gables of Hudson, Assisted Living is located on Darrow Road, Route 91, right across the street from Joanne Fabric. The phone number there is 330-563-9170. That's 9170. And you would want to ask for Denise, and she'll have all the details right, for you Right, and make there. a reservation for the program, right. and then come to the program that we're doing in March so you can learn more details. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, Kathy, this is excellent information. Folks, there's there are groups out there that you can uh, get involved with. There are resources out there. Stay tuned at the end of the program, and you'll see more information. Those phone numbers will be on the screen. Kathy's website, her blog will be on the screen. Uh, Kathy, do you have a thought for us today? I to do. I love this one. Way. Deborah Kay said, embrace curiosity. Be open, playful, and persistent. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Now go and make it a great day.